What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Tire Fryer YouTube channel. So today we're working on the fryer truck, trying to get it back uh, up and running. I wanted to show you guys something real quick. Pulled this transmission out. It was a Russ Moore rebuilt transmission. You can see the sticker on there. Just threw it in uh, to do the burnout competition uh, at Cletus and Cars. We're going to be putting in this Jake's Performance Stage 5 1500 wheel horse capable 4L80. I got a triple disc Circle D converter for it. And it's all going into this thing. We've got uh, another six liter that I've been working on. Um, there's going to be a video on that specifically, but we're getting it ready to throw back in the truck. So I'm going to show you guys uh, a little damage update from the cornfield. I was rolling around in the truck and noticed that one of my cab mounts is completely MIA. So it looks like it broke the actual washer. This big giant washer apparently just busted off. So I'm guessing that probably happened when I yeeted it into the cornfield. So there was that, and then... So here's my crossover pipe. Now you might notice, it's an interesting little wrinkle right there. You can see it kinda broke right there. So I'm guessing this thing's hanging underneath the truck. I'm guessing it got smacked pretty hard in it. You can see it broke right next to the weld, so I'm gonna have to re-weld that. Other than that, I haven't really found anything real major. We're gonna pull this motor out and we're gonna have to transfer a few parts over onto the other motor and then we'll be throwing the other motor back in and we should be ready to go. There might be some chunks coming out of here. I noticed there was quite a bit of fuel in the oil. So, ooh. Yeah, it doesn't look too hot. There's a magnet on the tip of this drain plug and it looks like it's, heck, there's definitely, I don't know if you can see that, but that is a definite metal chunk. I'm guessing we probably broke a couple ring lands with the way the engine was running. I will be pulling this apart in another video and I'll show you all the carnage. Found a nice little friend. Look at him, he's keeping all the flies out of my truck. This is not a spot for spiders, you little bastard. Get wrecked. All right, so we got the motor out of the truck. I'm gonna be pulling a couple sensors off, throwing them in the other motor, pull, like pulling the motor mounts off and just whatever I need to transfer over. I'm gonna be pulling the oil pressure sensor, the cam position sensor, and I'm also gonna be pulling the wiring for the knock sensors, factory knock sensors. And then we're gonna pull the motor mounts out. Everything's super, super dirty on this motor. This thing was absolutely filthy and I just slammed it in. This motor is only slightly cleaner, but it doesn't have quite the amount of trash that that one had on it. It's just not, not real pretty. Still got some soot on it from the fire, but it'll be all right. It'll fit right in. Hopefully this motor lasts for a while, but I'm gonna try to get this one built and probably at least do rods and pistons in it. I'm not sure what all's wrong with this, but I'm pretty sure we busted a ring land on at least one cylinder possibly too, so 
we'll get this torn apart at some point, but let's throw this motor in. These things can be kind of a pain in the neck to break loose because you're, you're pulling on the side, so it's always creating a side load. Once you get them busted past this ring, then you're good. It's got a decent amount of junk in it, really. All right, so we're gonna pull out the oil pressure sending unit. And to do that, you're gonna wanna get a socket just like this. You can get it from AutoZone for like 10 bucks, but it just makes your life way easier. If you can, I don't know if you guys can see, but there's not a whole lot of room to put a wrench or anything on this thing. So you pretty much have to get the socket. It's pretty much the only way to get it out. But you just slap it on there. There you go. So I already pulled the knock sensor harness off, but basically to pull this off, you just squeeze and push those two tabs out so you can pull them off of that little ring. So to pull your knock sensor, you're gonna wanna seven eighth ish socket. I'm using a seven eighths. It's probably like a 22 or 23 millimeter, but for some reason, I'm missing those right now, so I'm just using this, it fits. Let's throw a ratchet on there and snug it up a bit. All right, so I got a little Loctite on my oil pressure uh, sensor and I'm gonna throw it in there, just like that. To tighten this up, I usually just put my hand on the head of the ratchet and just tighten it down about as tight as I can get it. Call that good. Cam position sensor, just super easy. Just drop it in there. Last like half inch is a little tough. There you go, snaps right in. Pretty sure this bolt has a torque spec, but I'm just gonna do the same thing, just knock it down and get it tight. I always get people asking me what kind of motor mount adapters I have. I just grabbed these adapter plates off Amazon from ICT Billet. You just use them with a stock clamshell. Depending on which style of clamshell you have, you might have to modify them. This one had like a raised bump that I had to cut out, but it's pretty straightforward. They're adjustable uh, a couple different ways. So here's the plate installed on the motor. You've got a couple of these recessed screws holding it on, and then you've got a couple different spots to move it to. So I've got it sitting about right here, which is I think about almost as far back as you can go. I think I can go back a little bit more, but you can also move it pretty far forward. You've probably got three inches of adjustment with these plates. They're pretty cheap and they work pretty well, so I have no complaints with them. They've held up quite well. The one thing I will say is that these are made out of aluminum, so you can strip these threaded holes out pretty easily, but just don't over torque them and you'll be fine. All right, so I threw a fresh valve cover gasket in here. I'm gonna be throwing another one in this side. I always change these because it's just cheap insurance. It prevents oil leaks. You're running a lot higher crankcase pressure if you're boosting one of these. So it's just something that I always do. I've had pretty good luck with that. This timing chain cover is a Gen 4. So it's got the cam position sensor in the front right here. So I just had an extra one that I had laying around, just threw it in there. Um, that's not the best looking thing, but it'll work. These crank pulleys are a press fit and make sure they fit on there pretty tight because if they don't and they come loose, they will weld themselves to the crank snout and you'll have to cut them off with a cutting wheel. Don't ask me how I know, it was a bad time. Just get yourself a new one if it fits loose.
ready to fire this thing up. So no big issues so far that I've discovered except for a tiny little water leak in the water pump, but I'll probably just worry about that tomorrow. Other than that, it looks like it's pretty much ready to go. So I'm gonna hop in and we're gonna see if this thing fires. Battery just might be dead. What you wanna do is you wanna put your, uh, your black one on the red one. That way the battery can blow up in your face. This is like the worst first start ever. So you can see the problem here, that flex plate is hitting the starter uh, drive gear. That Bendix isn't pulling back far enough into the starter housing, or then this flex plate needs to be spaced out. It's only about an eighth of an inch. So the game plan right now is I'm gonna try to leave the crossover pipe on and just pull as little as possible. So I'm gonna drop that starter, disconnect the torque converter, and then probably disconnect the uh, transmission cooler lines, the harness linkage cross member, and just move this whole thing back and see if we can't figure something out on this deal. All right, so I pulled the flex plate off and I just laid it flat. So this is the flex plate that was in it. It's an SFI uh, flex plate from Summit. I'll throw the part number up. And this is a, a factory six liter flex plate. Now, just laying them down flat, you can see that'd be spaced out about an eighth of an inch. So we're gonna throw that on the motor and see if it lines up with the starter a little bit better. All right, so I threw this factory six liter flex plate in just to mock it up and to see how it compared with the other one. And I've got plenty of clearance. It's about a quarter inch where the clearance probably. Several days later. All right, so I got my new flex plate from ICT billet mocked up and you can see I've got plenty of clearance. So I'm gonna be throwing the part numbers in the description. I'm not sure why that uh, this flex plate's different from the other one, but I'm gonna try to figure it out and hopefully I can update you guys on uh, the difference in the flex plates. So this one looks like it's gonna work though. So we're gonna, finish putting her in. All right, so I've got all these torque converter bolts started. I've got my eighth inch washer in there. And we've got another about eighth inch of play between the converter and the uh, flex plate. So we're gonna go ahead and torque these things down and we'll be done. <laughs> this video I'm not really sure why that flex plate still isn't it's not the right one but I'm gonna do some research on it. I'll try to get back with you I might have gotten bent or something but yep that's it for this video I'll see you guys in the next one